Okay, so we look at GTA 4 21 by 9 and specifically after the 2016 patch. So much to, well, everyone's massive surprise, Rockstar released a patch for the game the other day and it does fix a lot of issues I had with the game. Certainly not completely, Windows Live is still there and performance isn't hugely better, but it certainly is a mile above what it used to be. On a GTX 980 Ti, even at 1080p, I would struggle to get over 30 FPS originally. Like, this thing was broken. However, now modern GPUs have been given better support and a load of other bug fixes have been added out, so yeah, it's the most playable this game has ever been on PC. And this is important because I really, really love this game. It's hilarious, the gameplay is so much fun, and yes, whilst many will argue it falls down in many areas like quantity of things to do compared to something like San Andreas, but regardless, it's a massive blast and totally worth your time playing. But anyway, let's go over the 21x9 support. So there is native support and it is pretty solid. The gameplay correctly scales to show off more on the sides of the screen at all times, like in all of the different camera positions both for when on foot and in a vehicle. The HUD shifts to the sides of the screen and screen effects use the entire screen correctly. Cutscenes are all rendered in game, which means they're all supporting 21 9 well, however, whilst most moments in them are correct, Sometimes, especially for close-up shots of character faces, the view actually seems to zoom in a bit, which can cause cutting off of the top and bottom of the image. It's quite strange having the cutscenes be so dynamic, but I can say that after playing for a few hours, it's no issue at all. The main menu has a stretched background image, but the menu elements correctly shift to the sides. The menu settings screens all shift to the left, but the background screen fills the extra screen space with black and the grey lines, so yeah, those look perfect as well. And the map view uses the entire screen space, but does have a weird thing where zooming in 100% causes it to lock in place. You just can't pan around. You have to zoom out again and then you can move. It's a bit quirky, but you're rarely ever going to be zooming in that far anyway. Loading screens are stretched, but I love having them full screen, and I'm not bothered how loading screens look so much as they just fill the screen, they don't give us black bars, and you're not looking at them for long anyway. Performance is very unstable though. If I stick everything as high as possible on a GTX 980 Ti at 3440 by 1440 I fluctuate from 95 FPS to high 20s all the time. Yeah, that's a lot of fluctuating, and after a lot of playing around with settings I found that actually you can leave everything on higher settings, but the only things that actually affect performance with any significant value are the view and distance sliders. By dropping those to roughly 30, I tried 28 to 33, and they all seem to give basically the same results, you can then stay above 60 FPS in most cases, though you still will drop under at times. But yeah, it gave the best performance to graphics quality I could find. Obviously, you can turn everything down to the bare minimum, but <laughs> the game looks horrendous. I am disappointed that such an old game still struggles to run, but yeah, as I said, this is still a big step up from pre-patch performance. Other small points to make, unfortunately you do have to restart the game whenever changing the texture quality, but luckily no other settings require a restart. I never did understand the whole off-center camera view when using a vehicle either, but you do get used to it after a while. The world does graphically show its age, it's very bland, really lacking in vibrant colors, however there are mods to spice things up a bit if you really don't like its monotone look. Admittedly, the colours match the game's theme of being really seedy, dirty and dangerous, but yeah, it does mean the world feels bland to look at. However, that said, from a perspective of how full the world feels, it's brilliant. Pumping up the density of vehicles, you get loads of cars driving around, there are always a lot of people walking around. The world does feel alive, and this is important when trying to believe the city is really real, something I talked about recently with Watch Dogs 2 failing to do. And bug wise, the game actually in my experience has been pretty bug free. Really the only issue I noticed was again graphical, the lighting flickering can get quite bad at times, but yeah other than that it's actually quite a robust version of the game. So like I said, I really love this game. It does get bashed at times, but it's totally worth playing. The characters are brilliantly written and the story never lets up with entertainment and intensity. 
Plus, for the fact that you can pick this up for a crazy cheap price means there is no reason not to grab this up. I'm going to give it a wide as fuck score of 4. Whilst moments in cutscenes are not perfect at 21 by 9 generally the rest of the game does its best to facilitate the extra screen space and it means you can definitely play this at 21 by 9 and have a brilliant time. I hope this gives you some information on how the game runs at 21 by 9 Give this video a like if you found it helpful and subscribe for future info. For any of the games at 21 by 9 head over to my channel. Hopefully I've covered it. If I haven't, then leave a comment down below and I'll try and cover it. And if you'd like to donate to the channel, the link's to my Patreon page are in the description. See you later. You've run out of roof, dickhead. <laughs>